Uh, encourage everyone to participate. Uh, share your thoughts, share insight. It's almost like the earth is bleeding, is how we said it. Uh, one person had said, um, is this oil spill coming out in the Gulf and now something in China? And, and one person asked, do you think this will create an issue that we will ever see any healing and resolution, and um, or do you think this will tear people apart? And and I had volunteered to say, I really do think that it could get worse before it gets better, but I do think this is going to help bring people around that's been fighting for so long against change and better. Like we said, no nukes or you know, I think some people will finally say we do need better energy resources now because now they'll finally see that this is what a bunch of us have been fighting against. This is now going to wash ashore and we'll be stepping in it and this is why we were saying this was not a good idea and and the loss of jobs or the the, the people that it's impacting and the children that are now seeing this what we all experienced 30 years ago this is now their compelling moment so a new generation is having their moment and they're going to be feeling this for a good while right i, I grew up in washington dc in the 70s and remember it pretty well and I got involved in the environment when the, the tear and the Indian and also the what river was it that burned I yeah. Yeah. See, we all and know. those were our those were our days and I think today's generation like you said the oil spill is probably going to show it because that oil is going to be you know uh, lapping up on the beach for 10 years probably I think so. you know and this is much more serious than the Exxon Valdez. Hundreds of millions of dollars have been spent to propagate a lie right. to stop regulation that would mm -hmm. hurt the coal industry or hurt the oil right. industry. Right. So there's lots of people out there that believe <coughs> the nonsense uh, because they, it sounded credible. They, you know, Exxon hired people who at least sounded like they knew what they were talking about, even though they were deliberately lying. Mm -hmm. So we're dealing with that situation. That's what just happened to the climate bill. You know, they, they stopped it, and they have that power to stop it. Oil pollution has been a problem in the United States since the beginning of the 20th century. Now we're at the beginning of the 21st century, and it just remains a problem. But it's a different kind of problem. But, you know, is this the moment at which we find a whole new generation of environmentalists? How do you write to that generation? But in 1970, I was leaving the first paper drive at Jefferson High School. So I've, I'm thrilled to see all you younger but, I mean, don't give up, because if you weren't around to breathe the air in Washington, D.C., in the, in the early, you know, in the mid-70s, you can't appreciate the progress that we've made. If you weren't around to get the scum off the river, then you really can't appreciate it. And it's both long-term change and short-term motivating people to change. You actually, as individuals, as citizens, as voting right, you know, individuals, have a global responsibility. I just wanted to show, that's why I came even. You have a global responsibility to hold them accountable, not for your shores only, but for global peace, for global you know, fairness, for, for sustainability globally. You, you are not just doing it for your own sakes. And you have to feel passionate about it, come hell or high water. Because that is actually your job. But you Nevertheless, you know, there's nothing like having a vote on an issue that makes a difference. Because you can stand outside and you can lobby and you can you know, talk to people and you can do all kinds of things like that. But when it comes down to making the vote, you, know, you pointed out these people have been lobbied and lobbied and lobbied and lobbied and they still don't make the right decision. Right. So and we they, can't trust they those people. They know what the right decision is, but they won't make it. But they won't make it. They don't have to go. Yeah. So I you've got to have people in office who will make the right decision. But there is confrontational things that you have to do. You know, we've been on marches, I've been gassed, I've been tear gassed. You've got to be active. You can't just sit and, and go, oh, gee, this is really lousy. You get on a blog and say, boy, this stinks. You got to hit the streets, you know, and unfortunately it hasn't really changed. Here we are 40 years later. Um, I'm an elementary school teacher, but you know who gets it? Kids. Yeah. I mean, right. they do. And I mean, I teach in the inner city. I'm in Austin Academy downtown in SAISD. But my 10-year-olds, they get it. Yeah. You know, they're very aware. And also, you know, they're so much more facile with social media and, 
you know, that's a, a tremendous tool. It's a little bit different than the way we mobilized mass marches. You know, I graduated high school in 70. Um, not to say that those can't all converge, but I mean, we do have, and especially young people have tools that they know how to manipulate now that are very creative and very powerful. Um, a lot of people have labeled themselves as consumers, but they're smarter these days. What I have found is, is um, in the corporate world, as well as in their homes, a lot of people have made uh, comments about, yes, they're recycling more, but they've made comments about making smarter choices about the paper they use and the plastics or the water bottles or um, uh, using smarter products in their home that are light bulbs. So I think as a consumer, they're, they're making better choices to, to reduce more. There's some, I hear about some cities who are already doing that, changing everything, making everything green. That also, a lot of these corporations, now they find out, oh, people are buying green. So you know, they up the price. That's, we need to put a stop to that. It shouldn't cost so much. My mother always said, hey, Beans and rice shouldn't cost so much. Deep down, ultimately, it comes down to economics. And when you're talking about consumption and consumerism and, and the corporations, it's about money. And until those end products start to reflect the actual price, the green accounting, the price that a disposable camera or a disposable diaper and, and the cheap plastics coming from China, until until, and I, I, you know, I, I hear what you're all saying about this gold oil and we're seeing this spewing and all, it is not going to be the change that you think it will be unless it somehow directly affects the young people involved. If somebody on welfare uses their, um, their food stamps up there, they get double them if they use them at a farmer's market. And that means people who are eating canned food are now getting really good produce food for the first time in a long time. You know, a mother of uh, four should be able to, you know, a single mom should be able to afford you if she wants to feed her children organically. But that's not whole foods. I should be able to, I should be able to, I want to put solar in my house. I should be able to afford all of that. I should be able to afford a hybrid car. But the reality is, most people cannot afford those kinds of things. The way is clear. What you said about having sustainable development and local supportive uh, business, if that was the case, there would be much more sustainable worldwide communities. But what you have is competing locally with you know, uh, bankroll, mm -hmm. subsidized mm -hmm. conglomerates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you acknowledge that reality, as citizens belonging to states where that happens and demanding change, mm -hmm. you're saving your own selves and many others. And so it's, it's always important to remember your humanity. Yeah. And I'd like to just bring something that when we're, now that we're talking about you know, elevating this up. Um, a couple of things are going on in the city right now that's a synergy that we can affect change because it's just beginning. And one of them is UTSA has a new institute for sustainable and reliable energy and it's led by a gentleman named Les Shepard. And he is going out in the community right now talking to corporations. And what he, I've spoken to him personally about it. He, it's not just UTSA but he's bringing every college and every department of UTSA together, from education to business to engineering to biology, all of those, as well as reaching out to the community to develop this institute. CPS Energy um, is funding them to the tune of $50 million over 10 years. CPS Energy announced their new CEO last week. And this gentleman is saying, without getting it, well, first, I, I, I actually first admired the fact that he said, I'm not going to give you my agenda because I don't know what it is yet. I want to come and I want to meet you and I want to see and I want to you know, find out. But he does agree and one of the reasons, one of the things that the board said that he will follow the city's uh, uh, Vision 2020 plan and sustainability and reliability. And we have the mayor now who is also leading that charge. So right now in San Antonio, we, we have these three things that are happening that are just beginning that we can truly affect their success or their, their trajectory if we just speak up and step in now.